we start then with gas volumetric. So this is the conceptual image of our gas reservoir. We know the area, the natural growth, the porosity, the initial water saturation, and then the formation volume factor for gas. I, I use O here for, for oil, but I should change it with G, or, all right? So BGI, and then recovery factor. So maybe you already learned it in your class. It, it's quite easy. We can know the gross rock volume and net bulk volume, pore volume, and lastly, hydrocarbon in place, all right? It, it is quite similar with the oil reservoir. So we need to know area of the reservoir, the, the thickness, and then the natural gross, and the porosity, initial water saturation, and then formation volume factor. So this is the, the formula and we need to know about it, okay? We need to uh, remember this, right? So this is a simple formula to know the OGIP or original gas in place. It is proportional with the area of the reservoir, thickness of the reservoir, the porosity uh, divided by the BG. And then to, to, to know about how much gas we can produce, we can actually do this a simple calculation. Gas produced equals to initial gas subtracted by remaining gas. And we can determine the remaining gas if we already decide the abandonment pressure. The abandonment pressure is the last pressure of our operation. If the abandonment pressure is uh, reached, then we can conclude the operation. We can shut down everything and then we can close the field and give back to the government, all right? We, we continue with the discussion of the estimate oil ultimate recovery. It's quite easy. We already know the hydrocarbon in place. And to know the estimate oil recovery, we just need to, we just need to estimate the recovery factor how much gas can actually be produced from the reservoir, all right? So re recovery factor is actually very important. And this is actually the main responsibility of the reservoir engineers. They, they need to do their best. They need to create a lot of programs, a lot of activities, drillings, workovers, stimulations, and something like that in order for us to get as high RF as possible. For typical values uh, for recovery factors in gas reservoir, for high permeability and volumetric reservoir, we can reach up to 90% depending on our abandonment pressure. In low permeability reservoir for volumetric, it will be more challenging. So maybe we can produce up to 60% depending on our well spacing. And if we have gas, gas reservoir with aquifer, water drive, it will be quite challenging. And maybe we can produce up to 50, uh, between 50 to 70%, depending on the, the aquifer strength and our production rate. You can see also here uh, the data for, for gas condensate reservoir. Okay, but in this particular presentation, we just want to focus on gas reservoir. Okay, we continue. Now we want to know about the grass rock volume, with the grass rock volume, because we want to know about the gas in place. So if we start from here, we have this schematic of a reservoir. Let's say it's a gas reservoir, and we can divide the reservoir to some segments from segment one, two, three, to N, okay? We can actually break down the, the segment to be represented by area and thickness, right? Because area times thickness will be the volume, okay? So this is actually done by our friends from geologists. It's not done by petroleum engineers. Uh, so this is the particularly the, the main responsibility of geologists. But as engineers, we need to know the logic behind the calculation. So after the reservoir has been uh, segmentized like this one, we can actually calculate the total gross rock volume. We can do trapezoidal rule, or we can also do pyramidal rule, okay? So, you know here, you, you can see here delta VB, which is the delta of the bulk volume. So if we sum all of the bulk volumes, we can obtain the total gross rock volume of our reservoir. That's one. We need to know the, the volume of our reservoir, the gross rock volume. But it's not done yet. 
we need to define or we need to know about our net to gross because we we cannot actually produce all our our gas from all parts of our reservoir our gas and our oil is only concentrated on segments that we call the net pay as you can see here if we have gross rock here with total thickness of hg is actually composed of shale and sand and tight sand and then shell again, sand, and so on and so forth. We cannot actually produce our gas from the shell layers, right? So we need to uh, subtract all the shells, all the water layers, and all the shelly sands in order to obtain our net pay. Okay, so if you can see here, we have three pays. Net pay one, and then pay two, and then pay three. That's actually the source of our gas. Okay, we, we only produce our gas from the net pay segment, segments. Okay, so if you already know uh, the pay, the, the thickness of the pay, we can calculate the NTG, the NTG or net to gross from pay. This is actually the responsibilities of our friends, petrophysicists. Okay, it's not done uh, by petroleum engineers. Okay, luckily, <laughs> it's done by our friends, petrophysicists. So to calculate about gross rock volume, it's done by geologists. And then for net to gross, it's done by petrophysicists. And later on, we will work together to calculate the gas in place. Uh, after we already obtain the gross rock volume, the area and the thickness, and then we obtain all the data, like, like, like this one. The area, we, we take that data from seismic. Thickness from log, porosity, initial water saturation, and net to gross from log, or we can also analyze them from core. BGI, or formation volume factor for gas, we take that from PVT laboratory, or we can also do correlations. RF. We do this by calculation, by analysis, or by, by simulation. This is actually our main responsibility as petroleum engineers, especially if you are reservoir engineers. So this is the, the main area of reservoir engineers, okay? That concludes our gas volumetric. It's not done yet. We need to compare the results, the gas in place results from volumetric with the method which is known by material balance. 